All right, the last part of this would be the social impact of British rule on Malaya. Uh, this shouldn't take too long, okay? Uh, now, so the first one will be on the marginalization of indigenous Malays. Uh, the Malays became a minority ethnic group um, where in places where the Chinese and Indian population became very large. So previously when we discussed about the economic impact, we saw how the British brought in the Chinese as well as the Indians to work in the tin mines as well as the rubber plantations, right? And so um, when the immigrants came over to Malaya, of course, they started to outnumber the Malays. Now, this was also a problem that um, Malaysia faced when they considered whether or not to allow Singapore to merge with Malaysia because when at that point in time when if Singapore did merge with Malaysia in 1963 uh, we would the Chinese would actually outnumber the Malays and that was a concern for Malaysia and the only reason one of the not the only reason one of the reasons why they would allow us to merge with them was the inclusion of uh, Sabah and Sarawak um, the Borneo territories that's where Sabah and Sarawak is to even out the numbers a little bit more so right um, in this case for the British when they brought over the Chinese and the Indians it, it started to outnumber the Malays in certain areas so they had to protect the Malay interests through this uh, thing called the Malay land reservation system so if you think about it um, when we say marginalization of indigenous Malays I think if you look at the, 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 the subheading itself it tells you that that is definitely a negative impact right rather than a positive impact okay uh, secondly, this thing is somewhat linked to the first one, the creation of a plural society. So what exactly is a plural society? Well, what is the opposite of a plural society? States not here a singular society, but please take note it's not a real proper term. It's just trying to highlight, you know, to you how they use the word plural. Uh, and so a plural society is actually where many different groups of people live together under one political system. So there are many, many examples of this and you are one example as well where you are living in a plural society in Singapore. Okay, singular societies in the world, um, there are quite a few actually. I'm not, not say that it is absolutely singular, but uh, it is more singular than... than and, and again, take note, I'm using the term singular society in a general... In a, in a, in a sense, to help you understand, it's not a real term. Uh. Um, yeah, the, it, it's in a sense more generally singular than plural. And I think Japan will be considered one of these uh, societies that's more homogeneous and more singular in terms of their, in terms of the groups of people living together. Okay. So when we say about the creation of a plural society, well, you would have a mixture of um, Indians, Chinese and Malays when previously it was just simply all Malays in this area. Okay, and uh, think about the positive and negative impact. Well, the Chinese and the Indians, they are very good at doing business and um, yeah, you will see rich Chinese businessmen all around. Uh, like for example, if uh, the top Chinese schools in Singapore, well, most of them are supported by rich Chinese businessmen where they make like multiple donations and that's why the schools manage to become more successful. And uh, Indian money lenders, to stereotype a little bit, you will see that the um, people, uh, the, the people who change money, even today, they are mainly Indians, right? That's stereotypical, uh, but that is also what they were really good at and that's something, that was a business in which they developed when they came to from India over to uh, Malaya and Singapore as well. Okay, so, well, um, this created a divide in the society because of this uh, different races, different ethnic, ethnic groups coming over and, you know, bumping the Malays out. And, uh, well, not, not to be racist here, but um, one of the one of the reasons why the British actually brought the Chinese and the Indians over was that because the Malays simply refused to work in the tin mines and the rubber plantations and they needed people who, who wanted to work and therefore they decided to bring them over uh, from the British point of view they felt that the Malays really wanted just a simple life so therefore they existed simply based on subsistence agriculture is it's not on an export based economy that brings us back to just now what we talk about and the economic impact right so therefore the need to bring the Chinese and the Indians here and when they became successful here, it creates a further social divide between them, right? Uh, and this social divide, well, um, it started to, it, it also increased due to education, um, where there was access to Western education for only the 
limited number of Malays, and that's uh, the wealthy aristocrats. So this created an educated elite segregated from the masses where you have people with uh, good education at the top and people with no education at the bottom uh, within the own within the Malay race itself, okay? And education is what brings you somewhere, right? I mean, you look at Singapore as a prime example of how education helps to uh, even the playing field and you know with a good education you can basically be a scholar in the public system blah 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 you know that kind of thing right and um, if you look at even in the past history uh, in China we have this thing that you're seeing now the China scholar official where you, if you are able to do well in your exams you basically get to become a official uh, a government personnel basically with education so with this education however the problem here is that it was limited to only a few people Okay, not to everybody. And so, well, that creates an even bigger social divide. So this is another one of the problems. Now, you realize that mainly up to this point, we've been talking about just simply problems and there's not much of um, positive impact, but you, you still can argue. In other words, think about the questions that they can ask in SEQ and try to argue your way about what is a positive impact then. Last one, urbanization. Okay, so the British, they created cities and towns in the richer states, and of course, it creates this um, urbanization uh, effect. Okay, now, for some of you, like for example, in Singapore, we don't really, you don't really understand what's the difference between a city and a town. Okay, so here you go. Right, so how we usually differentiate between city and town is a small town and a big city. So like for us, we are a city states and uh, maybe you can refer to the smaller areas like the Singapore the no sorry the Chua Chu Kang town okay the town area okay versus uh, Kampong okay so you see a city a town and a village so you see the process of urbanization is basically making things a bit more modern a bit more well with more people centralized around a particular area in a city Okay, so the urbanization is supposed to be a good effect where it created cities and towns in the richer states and for people to live in. So this effect of urbanization is supposed to be something positive for the people. All right, so right, we are more or less wrapped up with this chapter on the political, economic and social impact of the British rule. Again, please uh, follow up with details inside the textbook that would help you in your understanding a lot more. And uh, for this chapter, like I said, it's still a popular chapter in, in terms of both SBQ and SEQ. In the SBQ side of things, we have not really seen about impact of the British rule, but there's still something that they can ask on in SBQ. Uh, SEQ, you have seen questions coming out in both N and O level, so please do take note of that. Uh, again, reminder here, please do not spot just because they came out in previous years. They have repeated topics before, and so they will do so again. So please do not disregard this chapter, okay? Alright, that concludes this chapter on British colonial rule in Malaya.